746. We're back here on your Wednesday morning. A great week when it comes to sports because the stakes are high. Stanley Cup final game seven tonight. Game six NBA finals tomorrow night. Uh, Saul Miller, it's been a long time since you've been on the couch. Performance psychologist, welcome back to the show. It's a pleasure to be back. Playing under pressure, I mean performing under pressure, that's your book. You analyze this behavior. If we first look at the players, we know the adversity that is playoff pressure gives you the adrenaline to play up. But at what point does that pressure uh, become a disadvantage? Some pressure is good, as, you, as you're saying. Some pressure is almost necessary to be at your best. But when the pressure gets too much, people create tension, coordination goes, sharpness goes, performance goes down. So there's a whole bunch of skill sets that you can work with with athletes to help them to be smoother, to stay more in the present. Pressure is about worrying about the future. Don't miss this thought, this shot. If I miss this, this is what will happen. So we want to get guys back in the, few, in the present. And the easiest way to do it is take a breath. So I do a lot of work with people, getting them in the moment, doing a lot of breath work, positive thinking to stay where they, they'll be at their best. Simple activities and the idea of a deep breath. That's why we saw timeouts in the game, game five. If we talk about the pressure, NBA Finals right now for the Toronto Raptors seeking their first ever NBA championship. What do you think the mindset is of these players? Are they in panic mode going into a game like Oakland, or do the Warriors have the upper hand now, given how things shifted at the end of Game 5? Well, I mean, well, let's put it this way. The, the longer the Warriors can stay in it, the better the situation is for them. But every game is do or die for them. I mean, they're playing under a lot of pressure. I think the interesting thing is the core human emotions are love and fear. If you love something, you expand. I love the pressure. Give me the ball. I want to make things happen. And fear is don't miss. Fear is contraction. Fear is negativity. Most of the people who play at this level, whether it's in the NBA or the NHL, they love to, they want the ball. They want the puck. They want, they want to be playing in game seven. But one of the tricks, I remember Devin Dubnik, who's a goalie with Minnesota, saying to me, when he became great, because he was great as a junior player, performed badly when he went to the NHL, suddenly became a Vezina candidate, and I asked him, what was the difference? What happened? And he said, Saul, I learned to keep the game small. I just do what I do. I don't care if it's the first game of the season or game seven. I learn to focus on what I have to do, the basics, A, B, C, to be great. So if you can stay in the present with your breathing, if you can love the challenge, and if you can keep the game small, you're going to have some success. And that is almost easier said than done in this era with social media, because I want to get your comment on something that came out uh, yesterday from Jalen Rose, NBA analyst and former NBA star, who mm -hmm. said the culture of sport is pushing players to put themselves in harm's way as Kevin Durant when he got injured. I think about Game 7 Stanley Cup final tonight. You have Zidane Achara, broken jaw. He's still playing. Is the pressure and culture of sport too much right now uh, where players aren't thinking about their own well-being just to be out there to appease the fans. I think after an 82-game season, whether it's the NBA or the NHL, three rounds in the playoffs, the dream of winning the Cup, if you can possibly play, these guys love to play, they love the game, and you're being paid tons of money to do it, I think if you get the medical clearance, you're going to give it a shot. But even in Kevin Durant's case, given the injury, and I'm on the, the fan side that say he never should have played, even though their doctors cleared him to play, you think he made the right decision being Absolutely. on the court? Absolutely. If it was me, and I think if it was Riaz, you would be out there. Because if, you, if this is your team, these are your brothers, you love the game, you love to win, and you think you can, if they give you the clearance, you're going to go. Absolutely. I was expecting, I mean, I expected him to come out. Well, he had a great first quarter, obviously out for the rest of the series. We're going to see what happens uh, game six tomorrow night. Final note for the fans, how you manage the highs and lows. We only have a few seconds left, Saul, but there's an emotional roller coaster ride of extremes. Absolutely. With every single moment. More in the NBA than the NHL, I think. I mean, because the game changes so fast. There's so many scoring opportunities. You know, I, I can tell you something that I'm watching the game. The Raptors miss a shot. They miss another shot. I'm, I'm yelling at the TV, what are you doing? Make the shot. My wife will say, take a breath. 
<laughs> it's, use, it's use just your advice. a game. It's just a game. Absolutely. So I think you've got to keep in mind that it is a game as a fan. Love the team. Support your team. Be thinking, yes, we can and enjoy the pressure of the whole thing. Well, we're going to enjoy Game 7 Stanley Cup Final tonight. Game 6 NBA Finals goes in Oakland uh, tomorrow night. So I appreciate you coming by. Always a pleasure. Performing Under Pressure. That's the name of the book. Uh, going to take a break. Watch this in your...